So we're moving on to the Phylomenellida. Phylomenellida are now coelomates. This means that they have a true body cavity. They have three tissue types. And um, so uh, the Phylomenellida are worms. Basically, all of them are worms. So we're going to take a look at some of the most common classes. The class Polychaeta, as seen on the poster up here, you can see all the different um, species of polychaetes are mostly marine, which is why you probably recognize this one on reefs. Those are the tube worms. Then you have your spaghetti worm, and you have your scale worm. And these are different than, say, the tapeworm, which was in class Platyhelminthes. One, because they're not flat. They now have um, organs, and they're fluid-filled, and they have a body cavity. But they have body segmentation, but this is because of the muscles that they have to use to move in a specific direction. So they can intentionally move. They have cephalization, which means the formation of a type of head, whether more simple or complex. So the body segmentation in phylum Annelida, which you'll also see seg jointed segmentation in phylum Arthropoda, which we'll discuss later, um, is characteristic of this group. This begins here. We have our leeches, which is our class Hyridinae, and those are um, blood-sucking worms. And of course, hirudin is what they um, emit from their mouths when they bite to, to suck blood, and that makes um, blood uh, as an anticoagulant. So it makes blood thin. And the drugs that we have now, Coumadin, and other drugs that are used for surgery in people who have um, clotting issues, this is the basis of that of drug, the hirudin that was um, given, that, is, that, that originated, that was discovered in the leeches. The other group, you're looking at the earthworm, and this is your class Oligochaeta. So I'm going to show you, this is a sample. This one right here is an interesting worm. It's called a sea mouse. It actually looks like a sort of misshapen mouse, but it is a worm. And then comparatively, the size of the worms, you're looking at earthworms, which can get fairly long. And normally, earthworms can stretch anywhere from 6 to 12 inches. The Chernobyl worms can actually go from 6 to 9 to 12 to 15. Some of them have gotten really huge in terms of their mutation. Also, you have the class worm Nares and this worm here. All of them are segmented. And if, in, if you were able to get really close, you could see that segmentation. When you pick an earthworm up off of the ground or out of the dirt, also, what a lot of these worms have are a direction in terms of top and bottom of the body type. So they actually have bristles um, uh, that help them move or grip or anchor in. Most of them secrete a mucus. They have, especially the earthworm, secretes a mucus. Um, but in the class Polychaeta, what we have are those fringe-looking legs along the body are called parapodia. So you'll need to know that for your lab manual, parapodia. Um, another interesting fact about annelids is that they are, most of them are hermaphroditic. Um, they, uh, the earthworms, although they have no parapodia, but the um, polychaetes do have parapodia. All right, and one of the other things I'd like to show you, we have a model here which shows if you cut through one of these worms, you see how it's round? And it also has a section of muscles and then a digestive system with a space around between the two. This is your coelom area in here. You have a complete area that goes from basically um, head to tail, sectionizing the muscles, giving an area for the organs. And inside, we start to have a more developed organ system versus some of the, plat the flatworms, the cnidarians, and the phylum periphera. Um, the other thing is, there is a good one here of the leeches. These are leeches. They're not fresh leeches. But if you take a look, can you get in on the mouth of that leech right there? So this is the mouth of the leech. When the leeches attach, they secrete hirudin first and um, an anesthetic. And so when they do this, you almost don't feel the bite, and then you don't feel them at all when they're attached. So this is why people come out of kind of still standing dirty fresh water wondering, how did these things get on me? I didn't even feel it. 
So this mouth attaches and sucks blood while releasing the hair and making your blood flow freely instead of clotting. And they don't get much bigger than that unless they swell with blood, and then it's their diameter that gets bigger. So these are leeches, your basic leeches. And I think in terms of phylum Annelida, I'm not sure that there's anything else that you would need. They are usually uh, parasitic. Most of these are usually parasitic except for the class Polychaeta. So your leeches are parasitic. Earthworms, not so much parasitic, but a, a few, just a couple of the, of the um, species there. We're not going to ask those specifics. You just need to know the class and the basic phylum. Uh, one more thing I wanted to add about the uh, class Polychaeta is that the organisms, the, the phylum Annelida that have parapodia, these also function as gills, not just for movement. So that's why a lot of these marines. So it's important that you understand that these extra extensions that appear just to be like paddles for movement are also used as gills for respiration. So we're going to move on to the phylum Mollusca.